In this video, we're going to look at lofts and sweeps, and we're going to run through those uh, in some detail. First of all, here's my FreeCAD version. So you can see I'm on the latest stable release. I'm still on version 0.19. I've seen it listed as 0.19.1 or referred to as that in the builds. However, the, the revision number is that 24276 git. So to create a loft, we are first going to create a part. Um, inside a new file, I'm going to save that file, save as, I'm going to call it lofts and sweeps. I already have a file called that, so I'm going to select that. Say save. Overwrite that file. Create a new part. <coughs> Create a new body, and then I'm going to create a new sketch inside that body on the XY plane. Say OK. Just going to create with a square. I am going to now remember when you let me do that again. I'm just going to get rid of that square. When you select that square. If you look at my cursor, I still have the square selected. If I right click, it switches off. Otherwise, you're going to draw another square. So we're going to select this point and this point and the center point and give it a symmetry constraint. Then we're going to select this line and this line, tell it that they are equal. And then we are going to dimension a line. So I just have to put that down so I can get to my dimensions and dimension that line so I also got a little bit more space so we dimension that line and now I have a fully constrained sketch and notice again I have the dimension tool is still attached to my cursor so I right click to get rid of that and I can just move that dimension outside here because I'd like my dimensions to be outside so I can see them then we're going to close that one we're going to draw another sketch inside this body so i'm going to take this sketch i'm going to rename it i'm going to call it first sketch now i'm going to create a second sketch again on the xy plane and the sketch has disappeared so to get that sketch back we can go into the model tree. So I selected the model tab into the model tree, click on part, hit the space bar, and it'll bring our sketch back. Now I'll go back into my tasks so I can see my sketch here. And I'm going to create another square, just a smaller square. And I'm, I'm not really worried about dimension in these squares. All I want to do is to demonstrate how to do a loft. So selecting those points again i am using my symmetry select the side another side make those equal and then i can select a dimension and once again a fully constrained sketch so now to create a loft, we have to have an offset between these two sketches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this sketch. I'm going to call it second sketch. And then what I'm going to do is select in second sketch. I'm going to go down here to its attachment to where it's, it's Z position. So it's, it's under, you'll see it like this. You select that down arrow to attachment, select the down arrow for position. And then in the Z or Z direction, I'm going to go 45 millimeters. Everything I do is in millimeters, but if you work in inches, it's the same theory, just using different units. So now if we want to do a loft, and a loft is going to be a taper between those two there. It's going to make a model of these two shapes. So I'm going to first select my first sketch. I'm going to use this loft symbol. And it's going to ask me to add a section. So I'm going to say add section, select that second shape, say OK. And there is my loft. So now I have a loft between two 
squares. And of course, you're wondering what would happen if that square was a circle or something else. So let's try that. We'll go back into our second sketch. And to do that, we just double click on second sketch down to the middle here. And I'm going to draw a circle. So I'm going to draw it from that point. And we'll make it just a little bit bigger. Then I'm going to delete the original square. I've deleted that. It looks like my circle is not quite on the origin. So I'm going to select the origin, select my center of my circle, and use this constraint. This is a coincident constraint. I hit that. It will line the two up. Then I'm going to constrain my dimension, which is a diameter. And be very careful with that. I've showed it in other videos, but the this symbol, which is block constraint, which blocks the selected edge from moving, looks very similar to this constraint, which is fix the diameter of a circle or, or dimension it. So be aware that there are two very similar symbols there. The, the difference is if you look at this one, um, the line extends past the circle. Plus, normally it's set on radius, so you'll see it looks like that to start with. And then you're going to select the diameter. Okay, so now we have that shape. It's fully constrained. We're going to close that. And voila, we now have a loft that goes from a square to a circle. And so that's simply that's how you do a loft. And they're very useful and powerful when you're creating complex models. If you want something to taper up from a square shape or a rectangular shape to a circle, that's the way you would achieve it. If you have any questions, feel free to put a comment below and I'll do my best to answer the questions. Now let's take a look at a sweep. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this body. I'm going to call it loft body. So that'll be our loft. And we can turn that body off. Go back in our part, create a new body. We're going to rename this one to sweep body. So the difference between a loft and a sweep is the sweep is going to run along a line so we can cause it not to go directly between one point and another, but we can get it to go along a line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch of my shape that I want to move along a line. So I'm actually going to do it in this plane in the, um, I'm sorry, in this plane in the YZ plane. And for no other reason, then it just it looks cool, that's all. And I'm going to take a simple square again, because the shapes I'm doing are simple. They don't have to be simple, but I'm doing that because I'm trying to show you how to do the sweep or the loft. I'm not really worried about what the geometry is that I'm sweeping or lofting. So you can make it whatever shape you want it to be. So I'm going to do the same thing with this square. I'm going to make those equal. And I'm going to dimension one line. Now we'll tell you that I have increased the size of my icons up here. And I did that because somebody asked me if I could do that or if that would be something that I would consider to make it easier to see for some people. I'm interested in others input if let me know what you think, if you like having the larger icons, if you don't like having the larger icons. Um, also with the mouse, I've made that larger, so it's easier to see what I'm pointing at. But if you don't like it, let me know. Or if you really like it, let me know that too. Okay, so we've just done a fully constrained square. And so again, we have a square. And now we want another sketch. And I'm just going to 
rename this sketch first. I'm going to call this profile sketch. And then I am going to create a second sketch. Now this sketch is going to be of our path. And so you can see where my my uh, square is. I want to make my path on the X, Y plane. And my path is simply going to be a line. I can make it a Bezier curve, which will give us a nice curve line. So these these B splines, you just it's this very similar to um, using the polyline, except for the Bezier line will make a a curve when I when I draw that type of shape. So if I go here, 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 and here, for instance. Now you see it trying to smooth that line out. And then once I've done that, I can pull down the points, move around the line to get different shapes. Pull down this point. Let's get it an interesting shape. You can obviously you can dimension that as to how you want it to be. So that is going to be my path. And I'm going to close that. So now you can see I have a let's get that in the middle of our screen. You can see I have a square and I have a line. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this sketch to path sketch, because that's our path. And I'm gonna select the profile sketch, I'm gonna hit the sweep, and it's gonna say we have to profile which is the profile sketch is already selected and then the path to sweep along i'm going to select an object i'll select that guy and you can see already that it has created it so i'm going to say okay and now exactly what it's done is it's taken that square from here and it's run it to here so when it when it takes that shape, it will run that shape along the path. And if I turn the path sketch on, and you can see that the path is right in the middle there and right in the middle there. So what it's done is it's walked that shape along that path, but it's keeping <clears throat> the same profile the whole way along. Now, <clears throat> we know with a loft that it's a taper, but in this case, it's just a straight path. We can change that. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a second profile. And to do that, we're going to add a sketch. And we're going to do the sketch in that YZ plane. That's the same plane that this square is in. And we'll say OK. And we'll zoom into the middle here. We'll draw a reasonable size circle from that point there. Out to here, say close. And now what we want to do is to move this circle to somewhere near the end of our path. Now what we could do obviously is if we had our circle over here already, we could then draw the path between those points. Um, but again, I'm not going to go into all that detail. I'm simply going to offset my sketch one more time, maybe about 500 in the negative. And because I want it to be roughly near the end of that path, I'm going to bring it up a little bit in the X direction. Just until it looks close enough so that we can demonstrate the effect and then what we do is we go into our additive pipe so where this is called a sweep a selected sketch along a path it actually creates what is called an additive pipe so don't get confused with that and we're just going to double click our additive pipe and then at the bottom of our additive pipe there's a 
uh, a choice to go with multi-section so it's on it's typically on constant section you're going to select multi-section and then you're going to add a section we're going to add that circle and now you can see if i close that you can see it's basically transitioning between our original square um, along our profile line and it transitions to a circle so again, these, this is a complex modeling technique because getting this absolutely right into what you want it to be can be a little difficult, but I just wanted to show you how that sweep works. Probably when I use it, the most I use it is just with a regular profile. It goes all the way through. I, I don't usually transition because the transition is going to be fluid between those. So it's going to figure out how to go from a square to a circle over that length they're not always uh something that you can you can easily calculate or predict so from your point of view uh, obviously know it's there it's a useful technique and it's something um, that you're able to use to create complex models again i would mostly use that just with one profile come through but you can have multiple profiles through here so i could have a second square another circle and then another circle so eventually making all those parts in one sweep or one additive pipe so really good if you're doing um, cables or pipe work stuff like that where you want to you want to model a cable you can just take that circle and run it along that path and then you have a, a cable uh, looking model so hopefully that's clear and easy to follow if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below and i'll do my best to answer them so with that done i am going to hide the sweep body by pressing the space bar i'll go to my part just double click it to make sure that is the active part add a new body going to rename this body we're going to call this one spiral sweep and what we're going to do is this guy here we will be um, creating a spiral sweep so the first thing we want to do is we're going to create a drawing and we can do that on the xy plane Say OK, bring that drawing to the middle. And we're just going to do a circle. And we're going to create a circle there. And give that circle a dimension. Oh, again, we're tiny here so i gotta make it bigger we're gonna make that three millimeters i keep zooming in by mistake so i'm gonna zoom back out and i want to move my circle over here somewhere and there we go and then we're going to do a dimension from the origin to the center I'm not going to worry about what it is at the moment and we're going to do a dimension from the origin to the center in the vertical direction and now we can decide so if we're going to do a, a helix or a spiral this guy is going to go around this axis so if I have a three millimeter diameter and I want to have, let's say a four millimeter hole in there, I need the distance between here and here to be two millimeters because there's going to be another one of these on the other side. So if this is one and a half, then, so one and a half is the radius from that center point to there. And I want this to be two. So I need this to be three and a half. 3.5 and then I'm going to make this one millimeter above 
the center point. So that is my sketch. So that's simple. I'm going to close that. And now I'm going to zoom back into there. Then I'm going to hit the spiral. So sweep a selected sketch along a helix. So our sketch is selected. And actually, I'm going to rename my sketch. I'm going to call that helix sketch. And select that sketch, hit that helix, hit this button here so it fits in. And now you can see I've basically made a spring shape. I have a four millimeter hole in the middle, three millimeter diameter of my spring. And then over here, this tells me what mode I have in. So I have a pitch of 4.6 and a height of only 14. So I'm going to create, I'm going to make my height 40. So we got a bit more spring. And <clears throat> I hit enter there, so it closed. So I just double clicked it to reopen it. Now you can see a little clearer the pitch and you can see the effect. If I lower that pitch, I'm going to have a tighter spun uh, spring. And it will give you this warning here if the helix might be intersecting. Well, of course it's intersecting if my pitch is only 2.67. So my pitch has to be at least 3.01 to prevent that to prevent that from intersecting. And so right now I have it in a pitch and a height mode. So I can tell my pitch. The pitch is the distance between each coil. And the overall height is 40. So I can change that and I can have it pitch and turn. Sometimes with springs, you'll have a pitch and a number of turns on that spring. So you might want to have a round number. Let's go with 15 turns. I keep pressing enter and closing that. So 15 turns. So now I know I have 15 turns with a pitch of 3.01. Now I can also change it so I have height and turns. So now I can say I want it to have 15 turns on my spring, but I also want it to be 45 millimeters tall. So those are your options. You can increase the pitch by setting it a pitch and height or pitch and something. If I increase the pitch, it's going to open up a little bit. If I decrease the pitch, it's going to get tighter. And then finally, I can do this this uh, cone angle, so I can change the angle of it so that it now it's going up at an angle, so it's wider at the top than it is at the bottom. And I can change that angle and do all kinds of crazy stuff with this. So it's that simple to create a helix, and typically I'd use this for springs. So that's why I showed you a spring, but you could use it if you really wanted to. If you really wanted to, you could create um, a thread with this, but I prefer to use the fastener workbench, and I'll show you that in a different video. Um, but for now, that's this is basically the helical sweep. If you have any questions on it, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, there is a little bit of bonus at the end. I am going to show you how to um, constrain the the path that I drew for the other sweep. I didn't want to do that in the middle of it all because I thought that might make it seem more complex than it really is. But I will constrain that path, just show you how to constrain a path. And then uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing if you've enjoyed the video. Give us a thumbs up, and if you're interested in supporting the channel, please feel free to subscribe to our Patreon. Uh, the link is in the comments below. Thanks. Okay, so as a, just a little bonus, or just just a, for completeness, I'm going to show you how to constrain the additive pipe path or the sweep path. If you remember, we did a path sketch. So I'm just going to turn off that, that spring first. And I'm going to turn back on my sweep body.
So let's just put that in the middle. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to turn off the additive pipe, turn on the path sketch. Remember we do that with the space bar, so it toggles it on and off. That's easy to do. Uh, if you look down here, it shows you my space bar is like this little weird symbol. So if I press space, space, you can see it's a little weird symbol down the bottom there. That, that means space. Okay, I want to edit the sketch. I'm going to double click it. And it's really quite simple to constrain the sketch. I'll show you how. So we're just going to take some dimensions from here. Everything's going to go off this origin point. So I'm just going to accept whatever the dimensions are because I don't honestly don't care about them. And these are all the vertical dimensions. So that's it dimensioned that way. Then I'm going to switch to the horizontal dimension. And we're going to dimension them that way. So basically what we're doing is we're constraining these points and that will then stop that curve from being able to move. So simply selecting those, last one, missed it, hold on, last one, and now we have a fully constrained sketch. And of course you can drag around your dimensions so you can see what they actually say. Me personally, I when I use these curves like this, I'm generally just trying to get a shape, so I'm not really all that worried about the dimensions. But it is good practice to constrain the sketch. So it's constrained now, so if I want to move these points, I just change these dimensions and that will change that curve. But that's how you would constrain the sketch. Hopefully that makes it clear. And uh, I just want to make sure you knew you can constrain the sketch. I just didn't do it. Um, actually, one of the interesting things, was if I make that 500 millimeters, and then I close that, and I turn back on my additive pipe, you'll see now that my part has actually changed because I moved the curve. And in fact, where this curve comes down the bottom here, it's all going inside out, so it's made a, a very interesting shape in doing that. Um, so again, you would just play with those those dimensions to get what you want, to get the shape that you want. Uh, the additive pipe is quite forgiving, and it actually comes up with some pretty good shapes. So hopefully that clears things up, makes it easy for you. And if you have any questions, again, feel free to leave them in the comments below.